This plant may look stunning, but it does have a problem. It's severely root bound in this part, which means that it's always thirsty. And it's always drooping its leaves on me. So it lives in quite a warm spot here in my dining room next to the window. The problem is that I don't have a bigger pot to pot it up into. Plus, I like where it lives. I don't really want to move it. And there's not really much room for a bigger pot. So the solution is to root prune this plant, put it back into the same pot with some fresh soil, and then reinvigorate this plant a little bit. So as you can see, it's super healthy. But I think the roots are probably a little bit damaged because I've never repotted this plant since I bought it. And I think I've had it about three or four years. I can smell a little bit of a foul odor coming from it. So I suspect there's a little bit of root rot. That's one of the benefits of pruning your plant. It gets rid of diseased roots and it allows the plant to regrow fresh roots. So that's why I'm going to do it to this plant, reinvigorate the roots a little bit. So it is root bound. So what I'm going to first do is get it out of the pot, like so. Put that there carefully. There's a thick mat of roots in here and it feels very firm, like there's not much soil in here. If there was loads of soil, we'd be able to break it up, but it feels very, very matted. So it's a root bound plant. Like I say, I've had it about three or four years, this plant, and I've never up potted it. Let's have a little sniff actually while we're here. It does smell a bit funny at the bottom. Some of the roots are browning a little bit on the edge. So when the root ball conforms perfectly to the pot, then really it's a little bit root bound. These are finer roots, but it just feels like there's a mat of roots in here. So the best way to prune your plant and move that to the front is to get yourself a good old chopping board and a serrated knife and just lay it gently onto your board like so. Grab your knife and you want to cut about a third of the roots. Don't want to go more than a third really. We don't want to go more than a half anyway. It just stresses the plant out a little bit too much. So you just want to cut through with your serrated knife and cut off a third of the roots. So if I was to break that up, it's all roots in there and they smell a bit, they smell rotten. It's not the healthiest, healthiest root ball. So I'm going to put that in the bin. So we can cut off the bottom third. So that's where the moisture tends to sit at the bottom. And that's where you kind of get a bit of decay on the roots. So that's always a good place to start. But you can also go around the edge of the root ball to make it a bit smaller. So that when you put it back into the pot, you've got fresh nutrient rich soil surrounding the root ball and underneath. So it's going to make the plants very happy. So what I like to do is put it on its bottom and just go around like so. So this may seem a little bit drastic to do this, but root pruning is probably one of the best things you can do for a tired plant, especially if you don't have a, a pot to repot it up into. Roots do always grow back. They might go for a little bit of stress for a couple of weeks after the cuts, after the prune, but they always bounce back eventually. You can pretty much do this to any plant as well. On my last root pruning video, I've got lots of questions asking what plants you can do this to, but you can pretty much do it to all plants, even orchids. If there's some rotting roots on an orchid or tired roots, then don't be afraid to cut them out. You don't have to use a serrated knife, you can use a pruner. And also, in terms of when to do this, you can do this any time of year, because roots pretty much grow all the time. As long as temperatures are above 12 degrees Celsius, then roots will continue to grow year round. So you can do this any time of year, but it probably is best to do it spring and summer, just so that new foliage can grow. So I've just accidentally cut into a couple of leaves, but no bother. There's loads of leaves on here. It's a really healthy plant. It's gonna look much nicer in a couple of weeks. And it's got nice new fresh roots. Root ball is much smaller now. And that should fit nicely back into this pot with some fresh soil. Let's just test it out. So I'll be able to get some soil around the edge, which is what you want. I'll put that to one side and I'll just tidy up my board. Okay, so I've had a bit of a tidy up. So I did forget to mention that you could, if you wanted to, just prune away some of the foliage, just to reduce the foliage, just so it's not drawing on so much water for, and nutrients from the root ball that you just pruned. So it just reduces the stress a little bit, maybe a third, of the foliage. Just get rid of the uh, the most tired looking plants, but I'm not gonna really bother with that plant. I think it'll be happy enough. So I've got my usual potting soil mix, about five parts compost, two parts perlite. The compost gives the, the plant nutrients, holds the nutrients and water retention, but without the perlite, it'll be too dense for the plant. It will suffocate the roots. And I've got a little bit of broken terracotta just to put it in the hole of my pot. 
So I like just to put that at the bottom. Just stops the dirt coming out of the pots, but it also allows the water to drain through nicely. So I'm just gonna fill some soil at the bottom. So I want the soil line to be roughly five centimeters from the top maybe. So I need a bit more soil. I press it down a little bit because once I add water, it does tend to compress the soil, get rid of the air gaps. Okay, then we can have a little bit more soil in there. Just one more scoop, like so. Okay, that's gonna sit nicely. And now just go around the edges to fill the edges. So I like to go around one scoop at a time, because if you fill one end with soil, it makes it tricky to fill the other end. So there's no movement. So just keep turning it around. It's a really bushy plant there, so it does make it a bit tricky to repot this plant, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Let me know in the comments if you have a begonia like this. I can't remember the exact name of it. I'll put it up on screen. I think it's a red flame actually. Red flame begonia. It sits next to my my Rex begonia out up there. And I always find with these plants that they always look really tired during the winter. And you think, oh, this isn't looking so good for the year ahead. But then when spring rolls around and the sun comes out, the uh, gets a new burst of foliage normally. That's what happens to mine anyway, but let me know how yours is getting on. Lots of people do tend to struggle with begonias. Just give it a tap to get rid of any air gaps. So I'm just pressing around the side with my fingers just to make sure that all the soil is around the edge of the root ball. Don't worry too much if it's not perfect, as long as there's some good amount of soil in the pot. Okay, I think that'll do it. That's there for the time being. And now the next most important thing after doing this is to give your plant a good drink. So it's gonna be going through a little bit of stress. There's two really important things. Well, three really, I guess you could say. Give it a really good drink. Put it in a nice bright spot and don't fertilize it. So I've just got my water. I use, add a little bit of API stress coat to my water and also some tannin drops. Tannin drops to get rid of the larvae and fungus gnats. API stress coat to make tap water friendly for plants. So I'm gonna go in here and just slowly saturate all areas of the root ball. I don't want any areas to be dry. And it was a little bit dehydrated from when it was root bound. So it needs a good drink. So first, I like to go around the edge. That should get rid of some air gaps in there. And I like to go in the middle, right in the center of the root ball. So you want to water until lots of water is coming out of the drainage holes. That's when you know that the root ball has been fully saturated. You can't give it enough water at this stage, so don't worry about that. As long as you don't water it again within a couple of days and keep doing that, you want to let the roots to dry out in between watering. That's what I always say on my channel. So as you can see, lots of water coming out of the drainage hole. So that's had a good drink now. I'm going to pop this back on my shelving unit in my dining room. So a nice bright spot so it gets some more early morning sun. And like I say, I'm not going to fertilize it for a couple of months because it's got nutrients from the fresh soil, so it doesn't need it. Plus, it's just gonna stress it out a little bit if I give it nutrients when it's not quite ready, when the roots are growing, new roots are growing. It's been about four weeks, and as you can see, the plant up there is absolutely loving life. I'll try and grab it. I mean, look at that for foliage, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely loving light, life in that spot. I've not really had much of an issue with it since that pruning. A Couple of crispy brown leaves, but that's par for the course with a begonia. But I've not had an adverse reaction whatsoever to cutting the roots off. And it's absolutely loving life. So if you've got a plant similar to this that needs the roots reinvigorating, then don't be scared to give it a root prune.